Shalom, shalom, and greetings, family. All praise to the Most High Yahuwah. Getting ready for another beautiful feast, the Feast of Weeks, also known as Pentecost, also known as Shabbat. All praise to the Most High, y'all. We'll be getting started. All right. See you then. Shalom. This is what? Okay. Anyway, we'll see you soon.
come over here where the table is spread. Where the table is spread. Where the feast of Yahuwah is going on. Come over here. Come over here. Where the table is spread. Where the table is spread. Where, where the, the feast of Yahuwah is going on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you only knew the blessings that our wisdom brings,
There's nothing you have to pay. To pay. So be wise and step inside. Oh yeah. And do not be like those who throw their lovely chests away.
Thank you, Abba Hill, for pricking our heart that we will repent and ask for forgiveness, Abba yes, Hill. We yes. thank you for being so merciful, Abba yes. Hill. We thank you, Abba Hill, for the blood that was shed for us, Abba Hill. We thank you, Abba Hill, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you're going to do. Thank we you. that you would just continue to keep us rooted and grounded, plant like a tree next to the river running water. Yes. Make us to be one with you and help us to guard your laws, statutes, and tell the commandment. Give us the strength and patience to endure. Abi Hood, give us understanding and wisdom and the great memory of your word. Yes. Continue to encamp your mother, King, around us, building up ahead, protecting us from the wicked spirit, the wicked one himself, and all enemies. And those that plot and plan wickedness against us, let it be returned back unto them, Abi Hood. But help us to continue to move forward. And those that are not right for us, let them be removed and surround us with the right people. Surround us with wise counsel and give us an ear to hear what thus says the spirit. This we ask in Yahushua name. Amen. It's a blessing to be alive. Oh, yes, it is. It's a blessing to be alive. That Yahuwah is doing for me. I count it as a blessing to be alive. Yeah. Praise the Most High. You will thank him for another beautiful feast. Yes, thank you. Shabu, feast of week. Pentecost. Yeah. All the names that they don't give you. Pentecost, which means 50, because you know the count of 50 days after um, the feast on that bread. So let's go to Exodus the 23rd chapter. Go ahead, anybody can read. And carp some and carp some some old the harvest. The words of your labors, which you have sown in the field, and the cause of ingathering, support that is toward the end of the year, when you have gathered in your labors out of the field. So we see that you know about that was 2316. Yeah. Yeah. That you know that you know also you shall observe the feast of harvest. And we know we're doing the Feast of Harvest is dealing with what you harvesting, you gathering something together. So, so when we see this, you know, all the um, feast days have a type of a representation of something. Stuff it represents 
something like that. And here we're dealing this time they're giving you examples, you know, of, the, um, of some of the different feasts and stuff. And what we're supposed to do, you know, you know in captivity, or when our people was enslaved, they didn't get the opportunity. But the minute you who gave, gave us that break and started to bring back our remember, these are things that we're supposed to do. But yet you will have people to tell you, oh, that's done away with, that's old testament, you ain't gotta do all that, be saved by grace, all the other foolishness that they come up with. That, that's just a lazy way of not to do nothing, pretty much, and serve you who the way they want to be served. Now, and the thing about serving you who, the price been paid, right? We've been bought with a price. So he want that service that he paid for. Just like we go to a restaurant or we go shopping or whatever, we pay for a service. So we look for that waitress or waiter to serve us because we don't pay for this. So we're looking for a certain service from the waiter, from the cook, from the manager, and we want that. And when we don't get it, we don't be what? Upset. So it's the same with your hood and stuff. You can't be telling my oh, they ain't gotta do this, you ain't gotta do that. No, he paid, he paid the full price. <laughs> he paid the full price, so he want full service. Just like we would want full service when we go to these restaurants or wherever else we go at and we have to pay. Anytime you paying, you looking for a specific service. And so how much more for the most high and stuff? See, people look at it like, oh, you know, he the most high. He don't care about that. If he didn't, he wouldn't say it in his word. He wouldn't say it in his word. He must say what? We're not only his church, but he say, my servant. So a servant is supposed to serve. For to make his master proud, you know. So it's just funny how, how people act when it comes to the most high you who. Just because he the most high. Hey, he ain't that lenient. Hey, he, he the parent of parents. And we already know our parents, if we didn't give our parents the service that they asked for, we were going to be punished. Right? <laughs> so how much more the Heavenly Father, who was the parent of parents? Right? Mm -hmm. So we see we're dealing with this um, Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, Pentecost, which means 50, the count, you know, they count 50. So with this, the representation of it letting you know from that time of Pesach all the way to that time, that this, this harvest was growing. There was going to come a time that we was going to harvest. So when you look at the representation of wheat, the 50, what number is important about 50? The 50 they used in what? In Jubilee. And Jubilee represented what? That's when you was, your debt was paid off. You know, you were supposed to be free from whatever debt. Even if you still owe something, you was free from that debt. You know, you get that 50 year release. You also get a seven year of release as well and stuff. So you see this and stuff. So now you looking at the fifty days of counting that wheat, you know, for the for the um for the harvest for for um for the wheat and stuff, guess what? It was released from where? From the earth itself. It had been released for us for us to harvest, for us to what? Nourish our body and stuff. So even even the earth itself, which we know is alive, but yet it gives forth its du duty when it's supposed to. Why? Because it's obedient to the Most High. The only time it won't give is the Most High tell it not to give and stuff. We know He done made it where He done made drought, He done made famine, food don't grow, this and that. We see the time when He was in, in uh, Mitzurim, when they call Egypt today. So we see with this, these 50 um, days, these 50, I mean, these 50 days that He made it where the earth will release, give up the, that wheat, that wheat harvest and stuff. For we did what? Could be able to get, gather it in. Harvest it in for what? For our nutrition and whatever else we need to do with it. Because you know, with wheat, you can do all kinds of stuff. You know, make all kinds of um, meals with it and stuff. But yet, it was that time of release for the earth to give unto us and stuff. And then it's a time that we're supposed to give back to the earth by letting it what? Rest. Letting it re redo itself, regain itself, get its strength back by not farming on and this and that. So that's why when you get these certain feast days, you got to look more into it. You see what it's representing. And you know, it's not just the, what you see on the surface, but it goes in more where you can get more understanding of it and, and get that more feel of it. You become part of what you who are talking about. You know, you become part of the storyline. You can see what the Father is doing for us and stuff. So, with that, we're going to go to um, the next one. We're going to go to, let's go to Exodus. Stay in Exodus and go to the 34th chapter of Exodus in the 22nd verse 34 34th chapter of Exodus
in the 22nd verse. Exodus mm -hmm. 34 mm -hmm. in the 22nd chapter. I got it. Oh, you look like it. <laughs> Everybody there? Yes. Uh, 21? No. 20, 22. 34. 34. 34th chapter in the 22nd verse. Somebody read it. And you shall observe the feast of wheat, even of the first fruit of what the harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. Hallelujah. So so now you're looking at it, the harvest time. Yeah. You got one at the beginning and one at the end and stuff. So we got the feast of wheat. He said, what the first fruits of the what? Wheat harvest. Or the wheat harvest and stuff. So now we got that which is at the beginning. We're getting that fresh wheat is coming in and stuff. Because now we know wheat can last a long time. It's, you can store it up and have it and stuff for later and everything. But we know they call it the feast of weeks. Why? Because it, it took X amount of weeks, seven weeks for that harvest to come in, in full and stuff. Then we have, um, then you can also say the count of the 50 days and stuff. And we know that 50, not only 50, not only re rejoice as um, what I was saying that it's a time of freedom to be let debt be free, but which is the 50 years. But but just to say, not only the debt being free that, you know, you owe somebody that's supposed to let you, you know, let you go and stuff because your debt, because of that 50, but get us what the 50 re um, represents too. When you think about it, 50 re represents retirement. Mm -hmm. That means you um you don't retire from your, your work and stuff. You you've been set free from it because you don't pay your your um debt to society. Don't worry about it. You can um um now you're free from all that, that hard labor. You don't pay your dues to society. Mm -hmm. But what people don't realize, originally we would have still been, our ancestors would have been obedient to Yahuwah. All of us would have been, everybody would have been retiring at 50. We shouldn't be going past 50 far as that hard labor and work. Because when you read in the scripture, he gave an example with the um, with the um, priest them. Because think about it. When do, in the scriptures, when do the male become a man? At the age of 20. So by the age of 20 to, to 50, how many, to 50 years, how many years don't went by? 30. 30. 30 is what? Retirement time. 30 years of working is retirement. See, you all had the system already right there. It, that's why when you look at some of the things that man do today and stuff, it comes from the scriptures and stuff. Because that's mostly what they give you. 30 years and then you retire and stuff. But he had it, he had, you all had it on point. And now, you know, they had, you know, because we're in the society of so much stuff going on. You know, you got people working all the way in their seventies and eighties and stuff, way past thirty. People working forty and fifty years unnecessarily, you know. But originally, it was set up like that. You hit your, you hit your uh, manhood at twenty. You got thirty years to work that thing and stuff. Fifty, hey, boom, you, you, you set. Why? Because, in other words, everything should be already taken care of. And I'm, I'm, we're gonna give it a little more breakdown with that fifty and stuff. Because why? We got twenty. From twenty to thirty. By the time you hit 30, you should be ready for marriage and stuff. The man should already have everything set up to be able to get him a wife, bring him into a place. Why? Because he should have already been accomplished that, that situation where he got a place for them to stay and raise that family and stuff. Now, at the age of 30, at the age of 30, going all the way up to um to 50, that's what? That's 20 years you still got right there. So that means you don't got your children. By the time you hit 50, hey, your children grown. They they at that, that point now. Now you can kick back. You know, and do like stuff and stuff. Do like the people, like the old people that probably retired and be standing at the door at Walmart. Oh, welcome to Walmart. And they give you a little stamp on the thing. That's the least, because that's what he did with the priest. After they hit their 50, they gave them a little light. Dude. They ain't do that main dude they used to do no more. Now they get at somebody else and they did something like. So that shows you that, that, that retirement stuff and, and how things can work or supposed to have worked if we would still be obedient. You know, so these are the order that things that you who have. And it's so amazing. How he did it and stuff. 20, you ready to go to work. 30, you should be established, married, and have your own place to bring your wife into. 
by the time you hit 50, your children is grown, they've been taught and stuff, and now it's time for you and the wife them to kick back now and stuff, you know. So it's just amazing how you who have it and stuff. We shouldn't have been having to work all those extra years and the wearing on your body and all that wear and tear and this and that. But that is the beauty of that 50 and stuff. Anyone else? That's why I said it, 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 it goes deeper. And then what are the benefits too of, of the wheat? The benefit of wheat. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Remember I said you could do all kinds of things with wheat. And you're right, the rest. To get what? dressed. Huh? To get dressed. To get dressed? No, no, no. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. So what else with the wheat, since it's the wheat harvest, what else you can do with wheat? What are the other benefits with wheat? You can make bread, you can make cake, you can make flour. You know, you can do all these things with, with wheat and stuff. So that's, that's, those are some of the benefits that you get, the nutrition from okay, it. Okay, the wheat. I yeah. Wheat. wheat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I say it, it be having, you know, more deeper meaning. Just don't look at the surface of it, but go more into it and say, okay, this is what it is, this and that. So it definitely, it's um, a blessing overall of what it, what it does for us. So let's go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. from the next day after the Shabbat, from the day that you brought the Omar of the wave offering, seven full weeks, until the next day after the last week will you number 50 days, and you will offer a new grain offering to Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're seeing through, through the word, it, it haven't, um, it haven't stopped. You know, and, and people, you know, when they come and they say, oh, you know, that was then, you ain't got to do that now. But it was still going on. See, people don't, but well, people get confused when it comes to the um, so-called, so while we, I'm talking, y'all can go to Acts, go to Acts, the second chapter. So, and, and people think that, oh, oh, that was the Old Testament, this and that. Number one, people got to understand, there's no such thing as a New Testament. But he never talked about a testament. He talked about a renewed covenant, but he never talked about a new testament. That's the word play that they use. So I try to tell people that what you are reading in what you call the so-called new testament, guess what? They was going by what you call the old testament. The Tanakh. So ain't nothing changed. See, that's the comprehension that people can't comprehend. You know, they thinking it's something new, but yet these people are living by Torah. So because what you're reading in what they call the Testament, it wasn't even written. So people was taking record of what they was doing. And, and everything they was quoting was coming from Torah, because that's all they had. That's all they had. And all they was doing was enlightening you, you know, pretty much agreeing what was already written and stuff. Repeating it and stuff. It wasn't nothing new. So that's Acts, the second chapter, and verse one. And when the day of Shabbat was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Hmm. They ain't forget to assemble themselves together on that on that set apart day, on that feast day. But we see, quote unquote, is in the. New Testament for those that can't comprehend, you know, what, what it should be. And they kept it. Now when people read it, they, oh, that was for them people, this and that. But guess what? You are those people. You might want to realize it 
yet. But also, even if it was for a certain group of people, if you claiming to be engrafted or adopted into a family, you got to go by those family rules. Right. You can't come in there and do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. That family got rules. Mm -hmm. So how you going to come in there and do your own thing if the family already got their own rules and stuff? Mm -hmm. See, that's another concept what mess people head up. You want to come in there and do your own thing. You don't let nobody else come in your house and do what they want to do. They got to follow your house rules because the family already established. They already got their set apart rules and stuff. So we must do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So please, people, y'all stop that foolishness. <laughs> Okay, the next one. Acts. Let me see where I'm at. Acts um Yeah, 20, verse 20. I mean, chapter 20 and verse 16. All right, so where we at? Acts 20, verse 16. 16. Say, for Shaul had decided to sail past Ephesus, Ephesus, so that he would not have to spend time in Asia. For we were hurrying to Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost, on the day of Shavuot. On Shavuot. So they were trying to hurry and get there, you know, for the young feet. So. No, no matter where they was, mm -hmm. so it showed they was keeping it. The, they was keeping it then. They were keeping these feasts and stuff. But man want to do their own thing, and we got to get out that bad habit. Or, oh, we gonna serve you who or how we want to. We gonna stamp his name on this. But it ain't about what you stamp it. It's what he choose to put his name and stuff. But you want to put his name on Hall what they call Halloween now in the Hallelujah Christian church. Night. Hallelujah night. They want to put it on. They want to stamp his name on Easter and Thanksgiving. And all these other um, foolish holidays yet. Yeah, but the scriptures have its own set apart days unto your hood. But you want to do your own thing. Now tell me who was disobedient. If your child did that to you, you want to knock his head off, slap the teeth out of his mouth, mm -hmm. knock, him, knock him into the middle of next week and stuff. But yet you treat the most high like that. Y'all be ashamed of y'all self. <laughs> Yeah, it was the same. Mm -hmm. But see, the you know Greek put that word in that Pentecost, which means fifty. But we know that Shabbat. But yeah, it was um, it's the same. It's the same feast. Mm -hmm. When they were yeah. all gathered. Yeah, that, that's why they were all gathered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yes, it was just a. Short lesson that we had, but we're gonna continue to enjoy this beautiful day. And y'all, like I said, y'all ought to be ashamed of yourself treating the most high like that. But yeah, you want your children to be obedient and follow your instruction. But yeah, y'all ain't following the instruction of the most high your hood. You need to get your act together and stop playing. Stop playing, y'all. All right. Shalom.